Hello, I'm Julian Jakatu, and today we are looking at iPad OS. Traditionally, iPads have run iOS, which is the operating system on iPhones, but now going forward, they're gonna run iPad OS, which Apple is hoping to be the future of mobile computing. So let's take a look at all the new features inside it. The biggest improvements to iPad OS that have directly improved my workflow are additions to slide over and split view. Now you're looking at slide over here, and that's when an app is hovering over another app in this sort of narrow iPhone-like view. Uh, you can add apps straight to it, and that's the view that you'll get, and then you can hide it away easily and bring it over anytime you want. But the big change here is that now you can add multiple apps into slide overview, which directly improves workflow. Just check that out right there. Traditionally, the app that I just put this over would have disappeared, but now you see this little bar down here. You can just swipe that up and you can see all the apps that you have open in slide overview and swap to it, or there's a faster way to swap to it, which is just that classic iPhone gesture of switching to the previous app. And again, you can do this for several apps. There's no, I'm sure there's a limit at some point, but we've tried it with at least 10 apps and it hasn't had any issues. And the best thing about it is that you can easily hide it away and always bring it back and it'll all still be there. The next biggest change comes with split view. Now split view is basically where you can have split screen of two apps side by side, and you can customize exactly which, which app gives you more information. But the change here is that now you can have multiple instances of the same app. So basically you can see I've created three notes, but sometimes you wanna look at a note side by side with another note. Well now you can just by dragging that note over into the side, and now you got note one and note two right next to each other. So that's really great for people who wanna use this as a reference guide. You can do things like have two Microsoft Word documents next to each other, which is definitely helpful. And of course with email, it's even better. You can pull out an email and take a look at it on the side, and then you can go back to keep browsing and look at other emails that you've gotten, which is always helpful when you're drafting something. And if you're confused about how many of these multiple instances you have open, you can just slide open the doc, tap on it, and tap on the icon, and it'll show you how many instances you have. Now this might not be the best example because we only had one instance open, but let's go back to the notes. And now if I tap on the notes app, you'll see that I have not only this split screen view, but I had also opened another note. So it's just an easier way of getting uh, your head wrapped around exactly how many instances you have of that app. The files app also looks a lot better and you can finally now plug in a USB flash drive. Just plug it into the USB-C port on this iPad Pro and you'll see soon that it's gonna pop up right here. Just give it a second, there you go, no name. And these are all the files in there. You can finally do this. It, it's strange that it took so long to become available, but also you don't, you don't need to eject it like you do on Windows or Macs. You can just unplug it and have no issues with the file. And there's mouse support, though I think it's not exactly what a lot of people were hoping for. It's not full mouse support, but it's more of an accessibility feature. So I'm happy it's there. Uh, head over to accessibility, head over to touch, and then you have to turn on assistive touch. And as soon as you do that, you can see this large cursor appear and you can customize it a little bit. You can make it larger than it already is if you want. And you can also change the color. Uh, but otherwise, you can see that it moves around pretty quickly and it's gonna be a little weird to use because you're basically, it's, it's basically replacing your finger. So things like iOS gestures are gonna act the same. Sure, you can pull down uh, the control center the same way by pulling down on the right side with a single click, as well as with the notification bra. Going into the recents is sort of like a pull down from the bottom, so exactly the same way that you would with your finger. Of course, there's also the right click, which will bring you these options to go home, activate Siri, and, and quicker access to control center and notifications. And the things like text selection is where things get a little confusing and difficult. So I'm here in Google Docs and I'm trying to, you can see I can easily put the cursor anywhere I want to, but say double click will select that word and then it's just very glitchy and difficult to control uh, exactly how this works. So I'm trying to select more, or, or traditionally this is how you would do it on a desktop. You would just, you know, 
double click and, and drag, but that's not really working. So you really have to be a bit more precise and grab that cursor to do that specific highlight. And as you can see, we're in Safari right now and I'm trying to highlight text with the mouse, but it's not quite working. I can only use it to scroll through the page and that's again repeating the functions of the finger, uh, but for some reason, you know, that, that double click is not gonna select anything uh, because it's not full mouse support. And that's really disappointing because what I've wanted over the years of using an iPad is a trackpad or a full mouse support. And I think that will really open the doors to the multitasking, the level of productivity that we use on laptops that would really make the iPad a game changer and a true laptop replacement. So hopefully that'll come in future iterations, but I guess this is a good start. In the vein of accessibility, there's also a new feature called voice control that basically lets you control all the functions on an iPad with just your voice. And it actually works really well. And that's because it's using the same framework that Siri is run on. And basically I've turned it on and I can say things like open maps, show numbers, two, Cupertino, show numbers, five, show numbers, 17, show numbers, Three. It's really intuitive feature and I'm glad it's in there. There are also performance improvements in iPad OS. I haven't personally seen much of a difference, but then again, I am using it on the latest iPads. I'm sure if you're installing iPad OS on an older iPad, you'll definitely see a boost in performance. In the same vein, the Apple Pencil has also gotten a performance boost. It's now nine milliseconds, which is down from 20 milliseconds latency. And that means you're just gonna see it reacting faster when you put it on the iPad. But again, 20 milliseconds was already really low, so I haven't noticed that much of a difference. I like some of the text editing improvements that Apple has added in iPad OS. Number one is now you can just quickly drag the cursor anywhere you want. You have to remember to move your finger a little lower from the cursor if you wanna see it. Uh, I wish that Apple did magnify it a little bit more, but what's neat is that if you wanna be a little more precise, you can slow down and it becomes a lot more uh, accurate as to exactly where you want it to go. You can also double tap to uh, select a word and a triple tap will select the entire sentence and a quadruple tap will select the entire paragraph. Now, this is the part that I don't really like is that Apple has introduced triple finger gestures. Uh, so to copy, you have to pinch in and you can see it just copied and to paste, you can pinch out and there you go. It feels very clunky. I don't think most people are very comfortable using three fingers like this. I know you can like, you know, also do this. I just don't think it's very intuitive. Uh, I would much prefer to just use this copy paste options right here. There is another gesture. Basically you can uh, undo what you just did by swiping with three fingers across and you can redo it by swiping three fingers to the right. That's fine. Apple has also improved the way that you can type when you don't have a keyboard attached to an iPad. This is very clunky and difficult in general to type on, especially when you're walking around, which is why you can now pinch the keyboard and it'll go away into a corner and you can click and drag on this little bar at the bottom to move it around where you want. And the nice thing is with iOS 13 and now iPad OS, swipe tapping is integrated natively into the keyboard. So you can easily just be like typing like that. Help, I need help anybody help that's not an actual distress call just uh, the first thing that came into my mind but anyway that is a much nicer way of typing and of course you can also expand it back if you want to go back to this or connect it to the smart keyboard if you have one to type with a physical keyboard and for the first time apple is revamping the home screen well not really it looks like this, but now you can basically bring in the Today widget screen. So you can access the widgets quickly, just like before. Uh, that other screen is not really there anymore, uh, but of course you can edit it to tweak the apps that show up on your widgets. And you can also permanently just have it show up there and it'll remain like that. I think it looks a lot better. Uh, it definitely makes me use the Today screen a lot more and uh, who doesn't like widgets. A Couple of other changes to the user interface. 
You can do things like access the Wi-Fi settings directly from the control center now. The same applies to Bluetooth settings. And you can also jump in to go into the full settings app, but really you don't need to go into the settings app to connect to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth anymore, which is always a nice change. There's a whole lot more that we haven't talked about that's also in iPad OS. For example, there's Sidecar, which will help you turn your iPad into a secondary monitor for a Mac. There's also an improved Maps app with a feature called Look Around, and that's very similar to Google Street View. There's an improved Reminders app, as well as a revamped Health app, and of course, dark mode, which you've been seeing here as we interact with the operating system. Now, a lot of these features we've talked about in our iOS 13 hands-on review video, so you can check that out. And of course, if you have a supported iPad, you can download the public beta right now to try out all the features. However, I advise against that because I've encountered a lot of freezes, bugs, and glitches. So I think you should wait for the final version, which will come out in September. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts about iPad OS, leave it in the comments. And otherwise, like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want notifications, and go to digitaltrends.com for more.